Good morning. Today, before we begin our flow, I'm going to talk a little bit about half moon pose. When I first started doing yoga, I thought half moon pose was unattainable. I tried it and I thought, oh, I just can't do that. But there's some things that you can do to help yourself come in to this pose, maybe not coming into the full pose all the way the first time you try it. But slowly, as you practice these little steps, you can slowly work your way towards coming into the full pose. So the first thing I recommend for half moon is to have a block. If you don't have a block, you can also use, um, you know, an upside down bin or a really thick um, dictionary or something like that. And you want to have your block underneath whichever hand is going down. Half moon pose. In half moon pose, you have your whole body facing out towards the side. The front foot ideally is pointing straight forward, although some people have a little bit more luck coming in with their toes pointing a little inward towards the side. The traditional pose does have your toes pointing straight forward. So if you start practicing with your toes pointing a little bit inward, as you develop your balance and your ability to hold this pose, you're gonna to wanna to try to slowly shift your foot back out so that your toes are pointing straight forward. And you wanna get that block right underneath that same hand. Bend your front knee, find a nice comfortable place to put the block. You might wanna play around, maybe a little bit more over to the side, maybe closer to right in front of that foot. And then start to lift your back leg up. Now keeping the gaze low towards the ground is always gonna be easier than keeping your gaze out or forward out towards a side wall or up. So if you feel wobbly, just keep your gaze nice and low and lift your back leg up. Ultimately, the back leg is reaching towards becoming parallel with the ground. Now, if you can't do that to start, that's okay. You can also keep a little bend in that front knee. You don't need to straighten it out all the way, which also helps a little bit with the balance. And once you've come here, then you wanna start shifting your hips open towards the side to keep that top hand on the hip the whole time until you really bring your whole body open towards the side. And at that point, maybe you can lift the upper hand up. I usually come into half moon pose from two different places. So I'll show you both of those. The first one is from warrior three. If we're coming into half moon from warrior three, we'll be standing warrior three. Take a little break from the balancing posture by bringing your hands down to the ground and lifting that foot up, relaxing your head, and then you start to shift into half moon. You're gonna grab your block or your dictionary. You can also have the block at any height that you want here. I still prefer to have it at that nice high, spot there, giving me the most extra length in my arm. And then you start to open out. And the other, the other pose that I come into halfway from is triangle pose. I come into triangle. And from triangle, you drop your front hand down, bend the front knee grab onto your block and then slowly start to slide that back foot forward and lift it up. So first comes the leg and then you open up the hips toward the side. And last, you lift that arm up. Now, if you're feeling really, really balanced, not wobbly at all, you can even try to bring the gaze up towards your upper hand. But that's gonna be really difficult. I still start to fall over whenever I try to bring my gaze up towards the ceiling in half moon. So don't worry about that too much if it feels really hard. All right, let's start today in child's pose. Going to a kneeling position on your mat. Knees together or wide. Make sure your toes aren't overlapping. Inhale, lifting the hands up overhead. And exhale, folding forward. Stretch your hands out in front of you. Relax your forehead down towards the ground. 
Close your eyes here. Let yourself settle into the mat. Notice where your body is connected to the ground. And let yourself sink into all those points of contact just a little bit more. Notice as well which parts of your body are not touching the ground. My knees, the tops of my feet, the curve at the bottom of the palm, the elbow, all are resting firmly on the ground. And I have different pockets, my belly, the center of the palm of my hands, underneath my upper arms, those are the areas that are still open. You can feel the air there. Start to listen for your breath here. Stretching the breath out. Lengthen and deepen each inhale, each exhale. Find your yoga breath. If you're not too stuffed up, try to breathe in and out of the nose with the lip seal. <clears throat> and constrict your throat just a little bit so that you can hear your breath nice and loud inside of your head. Sometimes the Ujjayi breath is also referred to as the Darth Vader breath. Because it's so loud inside of your head. Just let that sound of your breath fill your mind. Clear away all the thoughts. <clears throat> And bring your focus fully into your body. Here now, being present in this moment. Start to do a body scan. From the tips of your fingers, work your way down through your wrists, into your elbows, to the shoulders and the back of the neck. Notice how your face is feeling today. And then move down the spine through your upper, middle, and lower back. Into the hips. And down through the legs, knees, ankles, and toes. As you go through each body part, just make a note of how you're feeling today. Notice any spots that are sore. And remind yourself of any injuries you have, old or new. Anything that might affect your abilities to come into a pose today. Remember, that the goal of yoga is to meet your body where it is in this moment. So it's really important that we take stock of our current state so that we can account for anything that's not quite right while we're moving through our postures. You can always take a break if that's what you need. And you're also welcome to modify any pose the way that's right for your body, just making this practice your own. Take a few more deep, full breaths here, just being inside of your body.
come into puppy pose and start to crawl your fingertips forward and bring your chin or your chest down towards the mat. Your hips can come right above the knees or be just behind them. Stretch out the belly, feel a nice gentle passive back bend here. On your next inhale, bring your hands back, lifting up your chest, and come to hands and knees, tabletop. And then adjust, bring your knees right below the hips, wrists come right below the shoulders. Start moving through cat-cow. Inhale, drop the belly down, roll the shoulders back. Bring your gaze up or forward. As you exhale, push your spine up towards the ceiling. One vertebrae at a time, nice and slow. Relax your head and neck down and bring the gaze through the knees. Keep moving just like that. At your own pace, just going with your breath. If you're feeling any pain in your wrists today, you can also modify this pose by bringing your hands to a different position. You can have your fingers pointing out towards the sides if that feels like a nice stretch. You can also turn your hands around and have your fingers pointing towards your knees. Whatever feels nice on those wrists. Come back to a neutral spine. Let's come in to thread the needle. Lift your right arm up high. Take a deep breath in, stacking the shoulders. Exhale, send your right arm through underneath the left and come to rest on the right shoulder and the right cheek. With your left hand, you can crawl your fingertips forward. Get a nice stretch through that left arm. You can also wrap your left hand back behind you, over and back, reaching towards the right hip for a little bit of a twist. If you want a little extra challenge here, if your hand right is drop the elbow down to the mat and lift your left leg up to the sky. So having that left leg up does challenge your balance a little bit. If you've got that arm in any of those other positions, you might start to feel really wobbly here. That's okay, it's nice to have a challenge sometimes, but don't be surprised if you roll over. If you ever feel super wobbly, just drop that left hand back down to the mat, drop the left elbow down, and that'll help you stabilize. Take one more deep breath in with your leg up. Exhale, release, drop your left knee back down to the mat, bring your left hand right next to your face. Unwind on a breath and pushing through your left hand. Lift your right arm high. Give your wrist a couple turns here. And set your right hand back down on the mat. Switching sides. Left arm comes up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, sending the left arm through underneath the right. Come to rest on the left shoulder and the left cheek. Same options with the right arm. You can crawl your fingertips forward. Get a nice stretch through that right arm. Wrap your right hand back, up and over towards the left hip. Or leave your right hand where it was and drop the elbow down to the mat. For that little extra challenge, lift your right foot high. Push through your heel, flex your toes. You can bring your arm to either of those other positions, but if you ever feel wobbly, just drop the right elbow back down to the mat to help stabilize.
Take one more deep breath in here. Exhale, dropping the right knee back down to the mat. Bring the right hand right next to your face. Unwind on a breath and push through the right hand. Lift your left arm high. Give your wrist a couple turns. And set your left hand back down on the mat. Coming into downward facing dog. Take your toes under. Lift your hips up. You can move around a little bit here. Find a nice, comfortable downward facing dog. <clears throat> Remember that everybody's body is proportioned differently. We all have a different history in our body, so we're not all going to look the same. But in general, your hands and feet in downward facing dog should be about hip width distance apart. Although you might feel more comfortable with your feet a little bit closer. I found some of my students do like their feet a little closer. Check in with your shoulders here. Make sure your shoulders are moving down your back, towards your hips, out of your ears. You can push your chest back towards the knees, but keep those shoulders sliding down the back. Heels are reaching towards the floor, but they don't need to touch, just going in that direction. And you can pedal out your legs, find some movement, bending one knee and then the other. Just getting the blood flowing through the knees and the hips. On a breath in, come all the way up onto your tippy toes. Exhale, sending your heels all the way over to the right. Hips lean a bit to the right. Maybe you feel a nice stretch here on the left side of your body. Next breath in, come back up to center, tippy toes. Exhale, sending the heels all the way over to the left. Hips can lean a bit to the left. Maybe you feel that stretch on the right side of your body. Back to center, tippy toes, big breath in. As you breathe out, push your heels down towards the mat. They don't need to touch. Just reaching in that direction. Feel a nice stretch on the back of the legs as you push your heels towards the ground. Lift your right foot high. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bringing your knee to your nose. Shoulders come right over the wrists. Foot goes back up, breathing in. Exhale, tapping the knee to the right elbow. Inhale, sending your right heel high. Exhale, cross it over, tap it to the left elbow. Straight back up, big breath in. And step the foot through between the hands as you breathe out. Drop the left knee down to the mat. Rise upon an inhale to the low lunge. You can always find your balance with your hands on your knees if you're feeling wobbly here. It's quite a wobbly pose, hard to balance here, so that's normal. And once you feel nice and stable, inhale, lifting your hands up overhead, keep those shoulder blades sliding down the back. Interlace your fingers, pointers up, take a big breath in. Exhale, gentle back and push your hips forward. Be really careful with the neck here. Straight back up, breathing in nice and slow. Exhale, twisting around to the right. Drop your left hand across your right knee and reach your right arm back. Maybe the right arm is sliding over the back leg or maybe it's just reaching in that direction. On your next breath in, lift your hands back up overhead. Exhale, release, plant your hands down, framing the front foot. Tuck your left toes under, left knee pops up. Look forward, take a big breath in. Exhale, stepping the left foot up to the right, forward fold. Half lift to breathe in, lifting up the torso. Try to bring your torso parallel to the ground. Folding forward as you breathe out, relax the upper body down. Inhale, rising up to standing, bend your knees, let your arms dangle down till you lift your neck up and then lift your hands up overhead. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. 
Side stretch. Inhale, hands high. Interlace your fingers, pointers up. Exhale, stretching down towards the right. Back up to center, breathing in. And to the left as you breathe out. Inhale, straight up to center. Exhale, standing back bend. Cactus your arms or bring your hands to your back pockets. Straight back up, big breath in. Exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips, keeping a nice long spine as you go down. Half lift to breathe in. Bring your hands to shins or float them over the ground. Exhale, plant your hands on the mat. Hop or step back to your high plank of a push up. Double dip, chaturanga, knees up or down on the mat. Up, dog or cobra, breathing in. If your legs are on the ground, keep your elbows bent. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up to downward facing dog. Left side, left heel comes high, take a deep breath in. Exhale, bringing the knee to the nose, shoulders right over the wrists. Foot goes back up to breathe in. And tap your left knee to your left elbow as you breathe out. Inhale, sending your left heel high. Exhale, cross it over, tap it to the right elbow. Straight back up, big breath in. And step your foot through between your hands as you breathe out. Drop the right knee down to the mat. Rise up on an inhale. Making your way to low lunge. Remember, if you're feeling wobbly, just drop your hands down to your knee to help yourself stabilize. And once you feel nice and stable, inhale, lift your hands up, turn the pinkies up to keep the shoulders sliding down the back. You're gonna release your fingers, pointers out, take a deep breath in here. Exhale, really gentle back bend, go nice and slow, be real careful with the neck here. Come straight back in, up nice and slow again. Exhale, twisting around to the left. Drop the right hand across the left knee and reach your left arm back. Maybe it lines up with the back leg. Maybe you just come as close as you can. On your next breath in, raise your hands back up overhead. Exhale, release. Drop your hands down, framing the front foot. Tuck your right toes under. Right knee pops up, look forward, take a big breath in. Exhale, stepping the right foot up to the left, forward fold at the front of the mat. Half lift, breathing in, open up the chest, pull the shoulders down the back. Forward fold, as you breathe out, turn your fingertips around and push your palms down towards the ground. If you can't quite reach all the way down there, you can always use blocks or books or whatever at any height. See if you can feel a nice stretch on the inside of your arms here, just pushing those wrists down towards the ground. Head and neck are really relaxed. Bend your knees, inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Roll your spine up one vertebrae at a time, nice and slow. Float your hands up overhead. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Side stretch again to the left first this time. Inhale, hands high. Interlace your fingers, pointers up. Exhale, stretching down towards the left. Back up to center as you breathe in. And to the right as you breathe out. Up to center, big breath in. Standing back bend as you exhale. Straight back up, breathing in. Exhale, forward fold. Take your time, hinging from your hips, going nice and slow. Half lift to breathe in. Double dip, chatter on the breathing out. Plant your hands, hop or step your feet back to your high plank. Lower down halfway. Keep your elbows right next to the ribs. Back up, breathing in. Exhale, halfway down again. Don't go below the elbows. Inhale, coming to up dog or cobra on the tops of the feet. Pull your chest through your shoulder. Exhale, roll over your toes, lift your hips up. Downward facing dog. Okay. 
One last sun citation, just straight up and down this time. No side stretch. Bend your knees, look forward to your hands. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hopper step between the hands. Forward fold. Half lift, breathing in. Forward fold as you breathe out. Inhale, up to standing nice and slow. Bend your knees, letting your arms dangle down till your head comes up and then lift your hands up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Going straight back down. Inhale, hands high. Exhale, diving forward, keeping a nice long spine. Stay really strong in your legs. Half lift to breathe in. Double dip, chaturanga, breathing out however you like it. Knees up or down. Up, dog or cobra, breathing in. Downward facing dog as you breathe out. Lift the right heel high, take a deep breath in. Step the foot through between the hands as you breathe out and rise up on an inhale to crescent lunge. Both toes are pointing straight forward, kind of on two different train tracks here. If your feet are lined up one behind the other, then you're gonna have real toe balancing. So you wanna have just a little bit of space between those two feet. Back heels lifted, front knee has a nice deep bend in it, right over that ankle, hips squared off towards the shoulder to the mat, and hands are up overhead, turn the pinkies in to feel your shoulders sliding down the back. We're gonna flow here with the breath, take a deep breath in. Exhale, coming into an open arm twist towards the right. Back up to crescent lunge as you breathe in. Exhale, dipping the left knee towards the ground, cactus your arms. You can come into a gentle back bend if that feels okay. Straight back up, crescent lunge, breathing in. Two more times like that with the breath. Exhale, open arm twist towards the right. Inhale to crescent lunge. Exhale, dipping the left knee down. It can be a really big bend or just a tiny one. One last time, inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, open arm twist to the right. Back up to crescent lunge on your breath in. And knee dip as you breathe out. Come back to crescent lunge, breathing in. Open out, warrior two, on your exhale. Pivot the back foot around, drop the heel down. Feet are perpendicular now. Front heel is intersecting the back heel or the back arch. Arms are stretching straight out in either direction. One of the things I do notice my students doing sometimes in warrior two is leaning over that front leg. So you can check in with your spine here. You want to keep your spine centered right above the hips. Feel the crown of the head stretching up towards the sky. And check on the back hand. Sometimes the back hand likes to droop down when we're not looking at it. Like an ornery teenager. And then bring your gaze right over your front middle finger. Five yoga jumping jacks here. With the breath, just going at your own pace. Inhale, knees straight, arms up overhead. Exhale, slowly sinking back down to warrior two. Four more, just going at your own pace. Let your breath be your guide. Three. Two. And last one. Triangle pose. Straighten out the front knee. Maybe you want to scoot that back foot a little bit closer to the front foot. Make sure your feet are still perpendicular to each other. Send your hips toward the back of the mat. Stretch your right arm forward to get deep breath and lengthening the spine. Exhale, making a quarter turn down with the arms. Check in with your back left hip here. Sometimes in triangle pose, that left hip starts to want to fold forward towards the ground. You really want to keep it in line with the body. It really doesn't matter how far down your torso gets. Don't worry so much about having the torso be perfectly parallel to the ground. Right hand can rest against the front leg or find a block there. 
And bring your gaze up towards your upper hand. And let's transition to half moon pose. Drop your left hand to your hip, bend your front knee. Start to slide the left foot closer to the front foot. Grab onto your block or your book or whatever it is. And plant that block somewhere in front of your front foot. Wherever you feel it'll give you the best support. And start to lift your back left leg up. Keep your gaze down towards the floor while you're lifting your back leg up. Once you think you've got it nice and parallel to the ground, start to open up your hips toward the side. Now, if you're still feeling pretty good here, maybe you can even lift up the upper hand. Take one last big breath in. On your exhale, bend your front knee, drop your back foot down, coming back into warrior two. Take one more deep breath in here. Exhale, cartwheeling the hands down. Plant your hands around the front foot. Send your right heel high, breathing in. Double dip, chaturanga, breathing out. A dogger cobra on a breath in. And downward facing dog on your exhale. Let's take a little break before we do the other side. Drop your knees down, make your way to child's pose. You can bring your knees together, you can have some space between them. Make sure your toes aren't overlapping. Push your hips back to your heels, relax your forehead down. If your knees are together, you can wrap your arms back behind you. Palms facing up right next to the feet and just let your shoulders drape over the knees. Close your eyes here. <clears throat> Reconnect to your breath. It's helpful you can find a mountain breath. Just adding one count to each inhale, each exhale, gently, methodically lengthening and stretching your breath out. If you have your hands wrapped back towards your feet, bring your hands back out in front of you. On a breath in, lift your chest up, coming to hands and knees, tabletop. Exhale, tucking your toes, lift your hips up to downward facing dog. Let's try that challenging sequence on the left. Left heel comes high, take a deep breath in. Exhale, step the foot through between the hands and rise up on an inhale to crescent lunge. Both toes pointing straight forward, back heels lifted, feet are on two different chain tracks, and that front knee has a nice deep bend directly over the ankle. Hips are squared off towards the short end of the mat. Inhale, lifting the hands up, turn your pinkies and feel the shoulder blades sliding down the back. Let's flow on this side to get a deep breath in. Exhale, open arm twist towards the left. Back up to crescent lunge, breathing in. As you breathe out, dip your right knee towards the ground, cactus your arms, gentle back bend. Two more times with the breath. Inhale to crescent lunge. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. Back up, crescent lunge to breathe in. And knee dip as you breathe out. Last one, just go with your breath at your own pace. Good 
Come up to crescent lunge on a breath in. Open up to warrior two as you breathe out, pivoting the back foot around. Bring your feet perpendicular. You can check down at the feet. Make sure that front heel is intersecting the back heel or the back arch. Peek on your back hand, making sure it's nice and high. Feel that front knee. Make sure it's not leaning towards the big toe side of the foot. You need to be pointing straight up. Check on your hips and your spine. Make sure your spine is centered right above the hips. Crown of the head stretching up towards the sky. And bring the gaze right over the front middle finger. Five yoga jumping jacks. Just going at your own pace with your breath. Inhale, knees, straight arms up overhead. Exhale, slowly sinking back down to warrior two. Four more. Feel every muscle working together. Three, take your whole breath to complete each motion. Nice and slow. Two. And last one. Straighten out the knee. Bring the back foot a little bit closer to the front foot, coming into triangle pose. Send your hips toward the back of the mat. Stretch your left arm forward, lengthening your spine. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, making a quarter turn. Coming into triangle pose. Bring your arms perpendicular to the floor. Front hand can rest against that front leg. You can also have a block underneath your front hand and bring the gaze up towards the upper hand. Let's transition into half moon. Drop your right hand back down to the hip, bend your right knee. Start to slide, sorry, left hand, left knee, bend your left knee, start to slide your right foot closer to the left and find your block. You can hug your block a little bit outside of the foot or just in front. Find a spot that works for you. Keeping your gaze low towards the ground, lift your right foot up. Try to bring that right leg parallel to the ground. And once you've got that right leg up, you can start to open up the hips toward the side wall. And bring the gaze out towards the side, lifting the right arm up. Stretch your right fingers up to the sky. Take one last big breath in here. Exhale, bend your front knee, drop the right foot back down on the mat, making your way back into warrior two. Take one more deep breath in here. As you breathe out, cartwheel your hands down, framing the front foot. Left heel goes high on a breath in. Double ditch chaturanga, breathing out. Keep your back foot up or drop it down. Up dog or cobra to breathe in. And downward facing dog as you breathe out. Let's take another little break. That was a pretty challenging sequence. Going into child's pose. If child's pose is not comfortable for you, you're always welcome to take any other resting position. Relax your forehead there. Hands can be stretched out in front of you or wrap back towards the feet. Close your eyes. Once again, finding your way back to a nice, strong, deep, full breath. Feel your back rising and falling as you breathe in and out. Feel your belly and your chest and your lungs filling up with air. Feel the ground, the earth underneath you, fully supporting your body. If 
your hands over up, but towards your feet and bring them back out in front of you. On a breath in, lift your chest up, coming to hands and knees, tabletop. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up to downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward to your hands, take a deep breath in. Exhale, hop or step between the hands, forward fold. Half lift, breathing in. Forward fold as you breathe out. Inhale, right hand to standing, bend your knees, roll the spine up, stacking the vertebrae one at a time. Float your hands up overhead. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Let's come into chair pose. We're going to do three chair planes here. So you can set up your feet however you like them for chair. You can have your big toes touching with some space between the heels. Or you can also choose to have your feet on two different chain tracks. Both of those are considered proper form. So either one is fine. Whatever feels better for you. For me, it always feels good to have my big toes touching with some space between the heels. If you bring your heels together as well, you'll notice your ankles banging into each other, which is very uncomfortable. So you definitely want to leave a little bit of space there between the heels at least. Inhale, lifting your hands up high. Exhale, sit back down into your chair. Push your hips down and back. Stretch your spine up really long. Feel the crown of the head stretching up towards the sky. Wiggle your toes and make sure most of the weight's in the heels. And let's do our three chair planes. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, sweep your hands down and back. Chest comes to the knees. Maybe you can lift your heels up off the ground, coming onto your toes. Two more times with the breath. Inhale, back to chair, keeping the hips really low. Exhale, chair plane, sweep your hands back. You can lift your heels a tiny bit or a whole lot. Last one, inhale, back up to chair. Exhale into your chair plane. Inhale, drop your heels down, come all the way back up to standing. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Ragdoll pose, bring your feet about hip width distance apart on the mat. Inhale, hands overhead. Exhale, folding forward, nice long spine, hinging from the hips. Relax your head and neck down and grab for opposite elbows. Gently sway side to side, bending one knee and then the other. Imagine that your spine is just water falling down towards the ground. Before we release, notice how your arms are crossed so we can cross them the opposite way. We're going to come into ragdoll again. Release your hands down to the ground. Weight comes to the fingers to heel to your feet back together again. Bend your knees. Inhale, rising up to standing nice and slow. Take your time. Bring your hands up overhead. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Dancer's pose. I'm going to marry you, so I'll be doing the opposite side. Bring all weight to your left foot. Put your right hand out like you're holding a tray. And then sweep your hand down and back. Check on your elbow crease in the palm of your hand. Make sure they're both pointing straight out towards the side. Kick your right foot up and grab the big toe side of the foot. Fingers underneath on the top of the foot. Thumb is right on the sole of the foot there on the top. Inhale, lifting your right arm high. If this is enough, you can stay right here. If you want a little bit more, exhale, bending forward, hinging from the hips, bend your standing knee a little bit, and start to lift that back foot up behind you. Well, on your next breath in, come back up to standing. And release, shake it all out. Let's try the other side. All weight comes into the right foot. Left hand comes out like you're holding a tray. 
Sweep your hand down and back. Make sure your elbow crease and the palm of your hand are still facing straight out to the side. And then kick your left foot up. Grab the foot with your fingers underneath. And lift up right on top of the sole of the foot. Inhale, lifting your right arm high. You can stay right here or you can go deeper. Exhale, hinging forward from the hips, bending your standing leg with that left foot up behind you. On your next breath, you're going to rise back up to standing. Exhale, release, shake it all out. Back into right dog pose. Feet come hip width distance apart. Inhale, hands up overhead. Exhale, diving forward. Nice long spine going down. Relax your head and neck. Grab your opposite elbows and make sure your arms are crossed the opposite way, the awkward way. Once again, you can rock side to side, moving one knee and then the other. Imagine you feel all the kinks falling right out of your spine through the top of your head into the ground. Release your hands back down to the ground. Weight comes to your fingertips to heel to your feet back together again. Take a half lift as you breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands. Hop or step back to your high plank upper push up. And let's come into a side plank. Roll onto the pinky toe edge of the right foot. You can stagger your feet or stack them. You can also drop the right knee down to the mat and kick your right foot off the side of the mat at a 90 degree angle. Give you a little bit of extra face there to balance. Lift your left hand up to the sky. Push your hips up towards the sky. Imagine that you're making a rainbow shape with your body. It's okay on the neck. The gaze can come up towards your upper hand. Take one more big breath in here. Exhale, release. Rolling over onto the other side, plant your left hand down. Roll onto the pinky toe side of the left foot. Stagger the feet, right foot in front of left. Stack up or drop the left knee down and kick the left foot off the side of the mat at a 90 degree angle. Inhale, lifting your right arm high. It's okay on the neck, you can bring the gaze up towards your upper hand. Push your hips up towards the sky. It's really good for strengthening the side muscles in your core. Take one more big breath in here. Exhale, release. Come all the way down onto your belly. Take a little rest here. Stack your hands and rest your forehead on your stacked hands. Or you can also rest on a cheek. And wrap your hands back behind towards your hips with your palms facing up. Close your eyes. Taking some nice deep full breaths here. Bring your chin back to the mat. Hands come right underneath your shoulders. On an inhale, push your chest up and then start to slide your hands forward. Coming to Sphinx Pose on the forearms. Elbows are right underneath the shoulders. If you're not sure if your arms are in a good position, you can bring your hands in and grab onto the elbows and then send your hands straight back out in front of you. That should be just about right. If that's enough, you can stay right here if you want a little bit more. Start to straighten the elbows out. Be really conscious of what's going on in the lower back here. If that ever feels like too much pressure, just drop your elbows back down to the mat. Take one more big breath in here. 
Exhale, release, dropping your elbows back down to the mat. Bring your left arm out at an angle in front of you. Kick your right foot up. Reach your right hand back and pull that right foot in towards your hips. Release and switch sides. Right arm comes out at an angle in front of you. Pick your left foot up. Reach the left hand back. Pull that foot in towards your hips. Release your left foot. Bring your left arm back down to the mat. Lower your chest down. Kick both feet up into the air. Coming into bow pose. Reach both of your hands back and grab outside the ankles. Put a breath in. Lift your legs up to peel your chest up off the mat. Keeping the gaze really low on the ground in front of you to protect your neck. Take one more deep breath in here. And exhale, release. If your head was turned to one side, turn it to the other side, where you can always stack your hands and rest your forehead on the stacked hand. Take some nice, deep, full breaths here. Bring the chin back to the mat. Hands come right underneath your shoulders. On a breath in, push your chest up and make your way to a seat. <clears throat> Coming into bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of the feet together. Let your knees open out wide to the sides. Pull your feet in as close as you comfortably can. They don't need to be very close at all. And if your knees are popping up, that's okay too. Just means you've got tight hips. It can be a genetic thing. You can also practice and get a little bit more flexible there if you feel like you're really tight. Interlace your fingers. You can tuck them underneath the toes or just in front. Push down on your knees, lifting up on the side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips. Keeping your spine really long. Open up your arms. Let your elbows push your knees down. Find your edge, relax your head and neck down and around up through the back. If you like here, you can release your hands from your feet and crawl your fingertips forward. On your next inhale, lift your chest up. Bring your knees in together. Knees pointing up towards the sky. Hands come behind you. Fingers pointing towards the hips. Gently the shoulder go the knees side to side. And make your way all the way down onto your back. Hook your knees into your chest, drop your arms around your legs. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, lifting your forehead up to your knees, curl into a little ball, squeeze everything together. Release your head back down to the mat. Find your kneecaps with your hands and do some circles in the sky with the knees. Giving your lower back a little massage on the ground. And find circles going the other way. Coming into a supine twist, open out your arms wide in a T. Float your legs in a tabletop, 90 degrees on the knees and hips. Take a big breath in here. 
Exhale, dropping your knees down together to the right, all the way to the floor. Right fingers tuck inside the crease of the left knee. If your knees are popping up to help them stay down, and then bring your gaze over to your left hand to complete your twist. Release your right hand back out to the side. Lift your knees up to center, breathing in. Exhale, drop them down together towards the left, all the way to the floor, trying to keep that 90 degree angle in the knees and hip. If your knees are popping up, you can tuck your left fingers inside the crease of the right knee to help them stay down. And bring the gaze over to the right hand to complete your twist. Release your left hand back out to the side. Lift your knees up to center, breathing in. Happy baby. You can hold outside the knees with the knees bent or open up your feet. Reach for the pinky toe edges of the feet and pull the knees in towards the armpits. Try to push your tailbone back down flat on the mat and then gently rock side to side. You can also bend one knee and straighten out the other leg. And just trade back and forth like that a couple times. And release. Make your way to Shavasana. The most comfortable laid down position you can find. Whatever that looks like is okay. It's also okay if you're not feeling so comfortable on your back. You can always take Shavasana on your belly or in a seat. Lift your heart up. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. Bring your chin into your chest and rock your head side to side. Just letting your head fall back to its natural center point. Release your body. Let all the tension melt out of you into the ground. Notice all the points of contact your body makes with the earth. And just let yourself sink into those points a little bit more. Really let the earth support you. Release your breath, making your way back to natural breathing. And release your mind. Just watch your thoughts come and go like the ocean waves. Spend a few moments of stillness to complete your practice today.
Blink your eyes open. Start to make your way back up to a seat. Thank you so much for joining me today for yoga. Namaste.